Hi, today we're going to see how to speed up the execution of loops, especially nested loops, by using C++ within Octave. As an example, I chose this formula from quantum mechanics, from Hartree Fock or DFT theory, that is used to basically what it's called contract the two electron integrals in a quantum mechanics calculation with the density matrix D and add up to the Fock matrix. If you're familiar with quantum mechanics, uh, you have probably seen this formula. If you're not, it doesn't matter. It's just an example of a very uh, calculation intensive operation. One way of calculating this operation is to use four nested loops. First, we loop over indices K and L, the first two indices, and we initialize a temporal variable with a value of zero. And then we loop over the following two indices, M and N, and add up this multiplication of a, a element of a 2D matrix D with an element of a 4D matrix G. So after we have added up all these contributions to temp, we add up the value of temp to the KL element of F. This is a computation intensive loop, so it's four nested loops. So this means this is going to be slow. So we can test this, for example, for a dimension size of four. Basically, D will be a four by four matrix and G will be a four by four by four by four matrix. So if we run this, we're going to see that the elapsed time is around uh, two milliseconds, which doesn't seem much. Let's say what happens if we increase this to a value of 32. So now we are going to be operating with 32 by 32 by 32 by 32 for the matrices. Now we run this and it takes a little bit more time. As you can see, it still hasn't finished. So we have printed the F matrix just for checking. And we see that the elapsed time is 10 seconds. 32 as a dimension is still not much. In a quantum mechanics program, you can have a dimension of maybe even hundreds. So this is not going to scale up very well for large uh, dimensions. And at certain point, you're going to hit a memory wall. But the algorithms in quantum mechanics software actually calculate this quantity on the fly. As this is just an example, we are not going to go into the most efficient algorithms. But if you want to speed up this loop, basically, these uh, nested loops, what you can do is use uh, C++ from within Octave. This is not so trivial. You need to know some C++ and the documentation for using C++ and generating Oct files, this is how they are called, is not as good as the main documentation for uh, Octave. So this is an example of how to do the previous loop within uh, C++ within Octave. So this is a file that I have called contract GD dot cc there are several extensions that are uh, possible and in here we are basically programming in c++ but we are using uh, classes that come from uh, the octave interpreter and the octave uh, code so the first thing that has to be done is to include the oct dot h header that contains a lot of definitions that allow all this code to work this would not work by itself because the a C++ compiler would not know, for example, what octave IDX type is or what args zero dot array value means. Oct dot H contains all this information. So we need to start with defun uh, DLD, which is a function definition for a dynamically loaded function. And we start by putting the name of the function, how we are going to call it from octave. Args is going to be a list of arguments a list that con can contain as elements basically any valid octave object it can be a matrix or a scalar or a vector etc and a number of uh, output arguments that in this case is going to be only one and then this would be like a help uh, documentation that tells you what the function is then there should be a series of checks 
These checks are very important because uh, this is C++ and it's called from Octave. And if you do not add this check and you, instead of a matrix, for example, instead of a 4D matrix, you add a 3D matrix, this may crash and it may crash Octave. So I am not adding these checks at this time because, so I wanted to make this example as simple as possible, but you should know that it's very important to add these checks. We have to define the type of objects that go into an oct file because this is C++. So G is going to be an ND array, N dimensional array, because there's not a particular 4D matrix class. And arg0 means that this is the first element of the arg arguments list. So in C++, you start indexing by zero. And dot array value is a call to a method that is going to basically see if the argument element that you enter, let's say the, the G for dimension matrix, actually uh, can be expressed or can be stored as, a, as an array, an ND array. And it's going to find out some information about that. Then matrix D is going to be the second argument, argument number one, that is going to be uh, stored or read as a matrix value. Then we're going to define this dim size, uh, di dimension size integer that's going to be equal to the rows of D. Of course, this assumes that D is a square matrix and it assumes that G and D have all the same dimensions. If you, if they do not, this is, this code is probably not going to work or it's going to give you wrong results. So in here, there should be several checks. For example, D dot rows should be equal to D dot columns and there should be an, several other checks with G also but we're going to skip that for now. So we are going to initialize a matrix F of dimensions dim size on the first dimension and dim size on the second dimension. And we're going to fill it up with zeros. If you don't fill it up with zeros, you're going to get some matrices that will have very strange values because this will come from a certain part of memory. So this is another of the things that you have to pay attention in C++ that you don't need to pay attention in Octave. And then we're going to run this a four dimensional loop. So octave IDX type is a type it can loop from zero to a number below the dimension size. So for example, if your dimension size is four, this is going to loop from zero to three. And this is some uh, one of the many ways that you can define loops in C++. And K++ means that after you make this comparison, you increase the K index by uh, one. Then comes the second loop is the same. Notice that loops in C++ have an open and closing bracket. Then we are defining this temporary variable as a double. And after that, we are going to basically do the same that we did in uh, Octave. So there's a slight difference here. We could have written this. So if we write this, it will not work. If we write only three indices for the matrix G, this will work, and two indices also for D. But with four indices, this syntax does not work. And I didn't know why, and I asked in the Octave forum, and I want to thank uh, Kai Torben Olfus, who explained why and how to do this. So you have to use this uh, expression, dim vector klmn dot as array. So I don't exactly know what this does. I'm going to check it later. But if you do this, this works. So after you close the two inner loops, you add the temporary variable to uh, the kl element of f. Then you have to define an octave value list, which is the return of the defund dld functions. And this could have many arguments, but in here we only have one. So I could put just an and R out just equal to one. So the first and only element of the red ball uh, octave value list, so element zero is going to be the matrix F that is uh, converted to the type of octave value. So octave value is a very, very general type that can hold many different uh, quantities. And then we return this list. The way to do this is to compile the C++ code using mkoct file, make oct file. So if we do this, it should compile. It didn't give any errors or warnings because I already fixed the errors and warnings that I got the first two or three times that I wrote this file. But there are many things that can go wrong. So it is much more 
complicated and much less user friendly than using Octave. But if you really need the speed at some point, it is worth it to make a small code in an Oct file. If you have to do a lot of code, if you have to write most of your program using the Oct files, then maybe you should change languages. So now we're going to see how to compare the speeds of these two things. So in this example, I will uncomment this. So basically, F is going to be the matrix that is uh, generated using an octave loop and F2, just another name, is going to be the matrix that is generated calling the function contract GD. The first argument has to be G and the second argument has to be D. If I flip this, this is probably going to give an error. So I'm measuring the time for both things and this is for displaying the, the numbers. So I will run it and we see that it takes a little bit of time. So this is the time elapsed using Octave, it's around 10.8 seconds. And this is the F matrix. It doesn't matter, but I just display them to see that they are the same. These are actually the same. And this is the time that the C++ code in the Oct function took, the contract GD function. So 0 0.58 seconds. And the speed up factor is around 18.4. Okay, this is a quite a good speed up if you have a, a very expensive program. It's not the same to spend 18 minutes or one minute doing a calculation. And now we're going to see as a plot, this is this other file is just uh, the same as before, but it's meant to do some graphs. And I'm choosing dimension sizes that go 2, 4, 8, 12, 16, etc., uh, up to 36. And I am repeating this 10 times for the smaller matrices and only five times for the larger matrices to have some average. Of course, it should be benchmarked with much more care, but I am trying to do this fast. So this is again the Octave code and this is the uh, C++ uh, compile function. And we're going to plot this. This is going to take some time. So dim size is going to be each number for each uh, step of this calculation. And I'll run this. It is going to take some time. So it took some time, but we can see here the both plots. So this is the time in seconds for the octave calculation. And you can see clearly that the C++ version is much faster. The ratio between them at the beginning for the smallest matrix is around four. So the C++ code is around four times faster, but when you increase the size up to a dimension of four, basically it becomes 30 times as fast and then it decreases slightly. So it is between, let's say 15 and 30 times faster. It starts decreasing probably because when you have very large matrices, memory becomes a big issue and not so much the speed of looping. But this can give you an idea of the kind of speed ups that you can get by using Oct files. This will not be true always, but if you have a several nested loops, it may be quite convenient to use an Oct file. So in future videos, we're going to see how to extend this code. Maybe, for example, instead of looping over the G matrix, we could uh, call a function that calculates those values in situ. And this other function could be a C++ function or could be an Octave function. And there are many ways in which this can be extended. Here, if you want to know more, you can go to the documentation of Octave and the first appendix, A1, has Oct files. So you have some information about how to use Oct files and how to use matrices and arrays. You have some definitions and types of matrices and you have some examples. So the documentation for this uh, is quite good but it's not as complete as the standard Octave documentation. And there are many things that are not really explained in here. And either you are going to have to figure out by yourself or you can ask in the Octave discourse a forum where they will really help you. There are people who know a lot and they're really helpful. And finally, uh, if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more, please uh, like the video, subscribe to the channel and leave comments if you have any doubts or suggestions for future videos. And thank you very much.